Welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodious. My name is Azalia, and today, gonna be bringing you guys a compilation of deck updates for Melodious, Lunar Lights, Wind Witches, and Trick Stars, adjusted for the November 6th Forbidden and Limited list. Now, I didn't want to go back and record an entire deck profile for each deck because they only include minor changes, so I thought this would be more convenient if I just consolidated everything into one video. But before we get into that, I just want to address a question that I've been getting asked quite frequently over the past couple of weeks, and that is going to be about my dual videos and dual commentaries. Now, rest assured that both of these series will be returning whenever YGO Pro decides to update their client with Master Rule 4. Uh, about a week or two ago, the developers announced that they had everything ready for release, except for a few minor adjustments and the AI, which, to be honest, no one really cares about, but they haven't said anything since then, so we'll just have to wait. So until then, just expect the usual deck profiles, playtesting videos, and other content that doesn't necessarily require me to have a client in order to produce. Now with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the deck updates. Alright, so let's kick off these deck updates with, of course, our Melodious deck. So, for Melodious, really the only things that we're going to change are the ratios for Gofu and the ratios for set rotation, of course, both of them being cards that are recently hit on the for, um, Forbidden Limited list. So with Gofu, the easiest fix to this is really just taking out two copies of it so that you only have one left. Um, Gofu is still a great card for us to access things like Deco Talker, uh, which is of course a phenomenal link monster for us to use. Um, and outside of that, he really didn't have any utility anyway. Uh, we didn't run any synchros for Gofu to act as a tuner for, so it doesn't impact uh, those types of plays either. Now, as for set rotation, of course, we have to take out two copies because it also was limited alongside Gofu, but the easiest fix to this is just adding in um, a few copies of terraforming. So if you add in three copies of terraforming, it really compensates for the cards that we've lost. And terraforming is a little easier to play with anyway because it doesn't lock you out of your field spells um, if you tend to draw into like multiple copies of it. Unlike set rotation, where if you activate one, you really can't activate the other until you destroy destroy the opponent's field spell that was set, or they activated it, or something like that. So uh, this really is the easiest fix for this deck. Now the one thing that I want to tweak real quick is uh, Link Spider. You don't really need this anymore because the fact that Gofu got limited, so you're gonna ha you're not really gonna see any of the tokens, uh, they're not gonna come up uh, very often in your games, and even if you do, you could just use two of the tokens to make your proxy dragon, then use your Gofu and proxy dragon to go for your... Um, uh, deco talker and that way you're gonna have a very established field without uh, using up this last extra deck slot that we could just update um, because I made this deck before uh, Baguska actually got released you can just uh, put one copy of Baguska into the deck and that really just fixes everything if you have a weak first turn play you know you can go for Baguska and then sit on that for a little bit as you collect your ritual pieces and things like that um, but overall this deck pretty much just largely remains the same, and it functions as it always does. So next off, we're going to move on into the Lunar Lights. Alright guys, welcome back. So for uh, Lunar Lights here, we actually have to, again, tweak the ratios for Gofu because Gofu is limited, so taking out uh, two copies of Gofu is definitely fine. It really doesn't impact anything whatsoever in the deck, besides limiting access a little bit to our Cyframe Lord Omega, but again, he wasn't really an integral part of the deck, he just kind of had that little synergy um, that was there, and even now, even with Gofu Limited, for those turns that you do open up with Gofu and you can access the Omega, it is going to be pretty useful to you, so um, that's why I'm keeping him there. Um, besides that, though, um, really nothing else changes about the main deck. In fact, I would actually just take out a copy of Dark Hole, because, um, you know, Dark Hole isn't really too necessary now that we're going to have a more diverse format. Um, first turn boards aren't going to be as stupid as they were with when Spiral was at full power. Uh, Spirals can still make the same boards as they always do. 
um, but it's just not going to be as consistent or they're going to have to go about it um, a little bit differently uh, depending on how they build their decks. Now we still have like the whole kaiju engine in the side deck made to counter sleeper and all those things that we're really weak against. Um, so really cutting a dark hole from the main deck is fine. You're just increasing your consistency with the main deck and of course um, you know increasing the chances of drawing into good things with pod desires, increasing the chances of opening up with your gofu and stuff like that that. Um, so the last thing that I want to change about this deck is really just the extra deck. Um, Link Spider is not going to be too useful anymore because of the fact that uh, we cut out a Gofu or two Gofus, and so with one left, you're going to see tokens way less often than you would have before. So in place of the Link Spider, what you can actually do is, um, I believe it's a uh, Bujin monster. It's a Bujin X Y Z, and one of you guys actually um, mentioned this in the uh, comments of either my playtesting video or the deck profile, I forget which one, but thank you to whoever did that because uh, Bujente Kagasuchi is actually a phenomenal card that you can actually put in. So it requires two level four Beast Warrior type monsters, and it's fairly easy to summon. Of course, you just have Kaleido Chick sending another level four, like either Crimson Fox or Blue Cat. And with that and any other revival like Luna Light Tiger, Luna Light Perfume, you can bring back whatever Kaleido Chick sent. And with uh, Kagasuchi, um, Kagasuchi, when this card is XYZ summoned, you can send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard, and also, you know, it gains attack for Bujin stuff, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and if this card that you control would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can detach one XYZ material from this card instead of destroying um, one of those Bujin monsters. So it can just sit there and just kind of protect itself from um, getting destroyed. And it's actually a fantastic card because by milling five cards, you're actually increasing your chances of um, seeing things like your. Zephros, you're increasing your chance of uh, getting Purple Butterfly or Lunar Light Perfume into the graveyard, and those can be great uh, combo extenders or help you correct your hand. Because most of the time, when you're making something like Kagasuchi, you're going to have a pretty weak hand, or you're going first, or something where you're in a suboptimal position. And if you're able to set up a a decent graveyard with some pretty lucky mills, of course, they would have to be lucky, but um, again, it just helps put you uh, at a slight bit more advantageous position than you were previously if you didn't run this card. Um, so yeah, that's really all the changes that I would be making to Lunar Lights. Again, thank you all uh, so much for your suggestions and things for tweaking the deck uh, while, when going forward. Uh, I'm definitely keeping your suggestions in mind, and I'll be tweaking this deck, of course, as we proceed. But uh, for now, we're going to go and jump into the Wind Witches. Alright, so for my Wind Witch deck, absolutely nothing changes. That's right, absolutely nothing changes for this deck because it doesn't run any of the cards that got hit on the ban list, and none of its plays are affected by anything that went on. The only reason I'm even including this in here is because I know I will eventually get questions on how do I update this deck for the new ban list. You don't. It doesn't change. Alright, so next off we're going to go into our Trickstar deck. Okay, so last but not least, we are ending the deck profile updates with Trick Stars. Now, Trick Stars have the same problem as some of the other decks that I had where we're running three copies of Gofu. So all you have to do, of course, is take out a couple of copies of this. Uh, leaving one copy is completely fine because it still gives us access to things like Deco Talker. And of course, Gofu being a level 5 tuner in this deck um, couples very well with something like Gem Knight Seraphonite in order for us to make Ultimaya Zulkin. And if you set a card when you have Ultimaya Zulkin on your side of the field, you can summon Crystal Wing straight from your deck. Now, the main way of accessing the Crystal Wing is actually just through Brilliant Fusion and Instant Fusion, both of which are searchable by the Predaplant uh, engine. So Gofu really doesn't come up too often, but he does allow us to set up um, this type of play in case we don't open uh, with both Brilliant and Instant Fusion or a way to search uh, the missing one. So that's something to keep in mind, but really it doesn't hurt the consistency of that play at all, especially because we still have the Arc Lore Christia lock that you can still use with your uh, defusion. So yeah, that's just something I want to point out. Now, one other thing that I want to change about this deck is that um, I'm going to be taking out Dark Hole in the side deck and uh, moving the Raigeki from the main deck to the side deck. This is mostly because uh, Trick Stars are a first turn deck, at least my variant of it is, and with a very combo intensive 
um, plays with the Predator Plant searching out the Brilliant Fusion, Instant and Defusion, um, both playing a huge role in a lot of the combos that we do. I felt it, it would be better to just take out the Raigeki, and because we like to go first, actually side in some of the Mirror Forces. Now, I'm going to remove Qu Quaking Mirror Force from this build, um, because Storming Mirror Force is actually going to be a better choice. Now, the reason why is because Storming Mirror Force actually has some synergy with Trickstar Lycoris. So Stormy Mirror Force um, returns all attack position monsters that your opponent controls back to the hand, and that's very useful with something like like Lycoris because Lycoris isn't um, doesn't bur just burn your opponent for every time they search something from their deck. It actually burns them for every time a card is added to their hand. So that includes from their field. So if you Stormy Mirror Force a field full of monsters to their hand, um, they're going to be burning for uh, quite a bit of damage uh, because of Lycoris's effect. So that's kind of nice, and that interaction is actually pretty good. Now, that's why I'm moving these Storm Mirror Force into the main deck. We actually need some form of way to have a um, protection from battle, right? Storm Mirror Force is a great way to provide that by just returning things to the hand. It has synergy with the deck, at least with Lycoris, and um, it's a great way to protect our smaller monsters, and it's even better when we have our combos interrupted. Now, this also adds three additional traps to the deck, of course, with effect negation from Psalm Strike and hand disruption from Trickstar Reincarnation. Um, another neat interaction is that whatever you return with Storm Mirror Force, if you don't want your opponent to be accessing that card again, you can just activate Reincarnation right afterwards and banish whatever you returned to their hand uh, from play. So that's um, kind of a neat interaction that you can do as well. Now to fill up the missing um, pieces in the side deck, I'm actually going to add in three copies of Lost Wind. Um, I feel like Lost Wind is a pretty good card for this deck, especially because of the fact that um, it's more of a slow, grindy deck, and we do need to protect some of our monsters from battle, uh, especially things like Arklor Christia, where 2800 is a very, very good body, especially because your opponent can't special summon, but in the cases where your opponent already has existing monsters on the field, like Decode Talker and things like that, where they could potentially just get more attack points than you, uh, it's actually very nice to have something like a Lost Wind to be able to target that monster, negate its effects, and it's a recurring uh, negation. So if your opponent summons something from their extra deck, um, you can set this card back to your side of the field from your graveyard. So I think that's pretty neat, and that's why I'm including it in uh, this little update. So yeah, that does it for uh, Trickstars, and that does it for all of my deck updates for now. Uh, all of the future uploads that I will have, which include uh, Lyrical Lucinias, um, and Ritual Beasts, Dino Mist, Magician Girls, things like that, they'll all be um, updated to the new Forbidden Limited list, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, those will be coming out shortly, probably starting this weekend, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.